for Polygon Pythagoras. Met a man, yeah, triple cash. Yeah. I seen the metaverse through meta, told my eyes a megaphone Customize my empty skin to optimize my flesh and bone Phase one evolution, revolution Smart contracts inside your smartphone Phase one evolution, revolution Help me healthy, ET phone Whole body markerless, motion capture The metaverse broken after the metatope golden era The whitelist still open, hurry up what you need, golden chariot Holy virgins that's holding cherubims, paving the road with fairy dust Create, create the avatar of your wildest dreams, yeah And use it inside your live stream and yeah. all your metaverses, favorite games and widescreen. Metatope, visualize your digital audience. What up, what up? I'm here. What's up, Sonny? Thanks for being here, man. Um, from what I've heard so far, spaces have been in a wreck today. So it might be low attendance. We don't know. People are just probably got t- fed up the last hour of not being able to see anything. So uh, if any case, worst case, I mean, if anything, I'd love to, let's definitely dive into some stuff today. And then uh, next week, if you're available Thursday, man, we'd love to run it back. Uh, with some more with some more guests and stuff too so uh thanks for everyone being here uh and uh yeah thanks for the uh intro we've got crypto medic our operations division behind the the metatope account today and we have walker executive vice president and myself director of partnerships so uh thanks everyone for being here sunny man what's going on thanks for uh thanks for stopping by how's your legs today by the way Man, a little sore, a little sore for sure, but thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Um, always a fun time to connect with other people in the space. Um, so, yeah, definitely excited to be here and uh, and talk and learn a little bit more and connect with all of you. For sure, man, for sure. I saw, uh, I saw a couple of highlights of, uh, of the hoops action. Um, yeah, you guys are ballers, and I'm afraid uh, I, I don't think I want to go try that stuff. I can barely dribble between my legs, to be honest with you. <laughs> I'm better at volleyball, but... Yeah. So, hey, Walker, what's up, man? Thanks for uh, thanks for stopping. In. I appreciate everyone being here. I could have, I wasn't sure I was gonna be able to be honest, but Walker, thanks for being here. Would love to hear some market analysis and in, in a little bit too. Yeah, man. Of, of course. Um, I was actually just getting ready um, to post a tweet. I'll pin it up in a second. But dude, I mean, the, the technicals look beautiful. You know, we've had some really, really strong fundamental catalyst um, over the past week. Regardless of how you view BlackRock, Fidelity, Charles Schwab, any of these big players. Um, And most of the time, you know, they they come in, they manipulate, right? They're in bed with the regulators. We all know that. Uh, But, I mean, it's really just a huge validation to the staying power of crypto um, and and to really, like, what this asset class is going to mean to to TradFi Um, and and really seeing this step in as, as a new sector, um, you know, to, to the larger economic development that we see in the world. So it's, it's, a, it's a beautiful day, man. You know, we, we came down with Ethereum and Bitcoin. Check out the daily on TradingView. I highly, highly recommend uh, for anybody that's in this space, you know, to just like start to, to get their toes wet if you haven't with just doing some t- simple technical analysis. Um, but, you know, really since... Really, since uh, like November of 22, we started making uh, this, you know, this this upper this this upper trend line, um, and and really getting into this strong technical pattern. We pushed up past 2K with ETH. We came back down and tested the bottom of that range just perfectly. And how coincidental was it that the 200-day moving average was sitting right there on the line? Also, wound up almost perfectly on our 0.5 for the Fibonacci retracement. So just a ton of convergence, like right at that $1,640 level for Ethereum. I took a long there, uh, made a head and shoulders pattern on the four hour and inverse head and shoulders, excuse me. We've broken out of that. And now we have broken out of this upper trend line that we've been fighting um, really since, since April. Um, we've we've broken out. We're closing the daily in an hour and forty seven minutes. And if this thing holds, I might just have to double down on my longs. So it's a it's it's a great day, man. Everybody stay safe. Always take your profits. You can't go broke taking profits. And get ready because it it really looks like we're back into to buy the dip season. Um, and you know, but but at the same time, right? I mean, refer back to 2019 or almost any past cycle. We get these big pumps, and and even in you know like a bullish scenario, 
there are quite frequently, you know, black swan events. So just make sure that you're prepared for that. But I'm, I'm full, I'm full back on, uh, you know, buying the dip mode, which is, which is really exciting. And yeah, boys get, uh, get ready to send it ladies as well. <laughs> Speaking of ladies, let's talk to Enzo. I mean, I mean, what up Enzo? Hey, how's it going everyone? Uh, Dude, I, as most of you know, if you guys have uh, followed along, I, I've told you guys that I stayed out of the market for the past like month and a half almost now. But uh, Walker's making me want to come back. I'm not going to lie to you, dude. I thought you speak so positively of, uh, of uh, the price action going on right now. So I'm like tempted to just start at least just buying Ethereum. I don't know if I'll ever get back into uh, meme coins. Uh, for this season, maybe next season, but th- I'm very tempted to just start getting back into Ethereum at least. Why would you ever, ever leave meme coins? The meme, you are meme queen, meme coins. Meme coins are you, Enzo? It, dude, it was uh, taking a really bad toll on my mental health. Uh, it, I don't know why every single one I didn't go in went up. Every single one I went in went down. I was like, okay, it's just me. It's a, it's a personal thing. So I just stepped away. So what you got to do is just do the opposite of what you feel. You know, like when you feel like, hey, that's not the one I want to go in. That's the one, bro. It's like Gary Gensler. That's the one you want to be in. The Gensler point. And then, so it's not it's not just you, man. You know, it's 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 an extremely um, tough market to trade, right? And and so I'll, I'll, I'll kind of tell you my piece on on the meme coins in general. This was the first cycle ever um, that I had purchased memes coins. You know, like going into the bear, I started to accumulate a little bit of Doge, but outside of that, it was always extremely hard for me to to trade co- like meme coins because what I found with my investments was that. If I didn't have like a true conviction, and and for me that conviction comes from you know like the fundamental and like the long term outlook of an asset, right? Like why is this going to be valuable, uh, like to society and to humanity? And you know with meme coins, like that value proposition for me was was really really hard um, to to understand. And I mean you know if you, if you look across the market, right? Crypto is volatile enough. You, you get into meme coins. And, you know, 90, you know, plus out of 100 of these things, you know, just aren't going to make it. So, so it's really difficult. And I think it's a great learning experience. And, and, and you hold a really strong message to help other investors of, you know, where to put your time and your attention uh, to ensure that that's being done in a sustainable way. Now, you know, on the flip side of things, right, like why, why are meme coins so, so interesting and, and really like something – that I want to continue to learn and trade in the future. It's because like, if you, if you look at a regulated market, right, you look at a stock um, or really any type of equity, it's, it's, it's very, uh, it's very sensible, right. In, 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 in a way that you can quantify the, the value that that asset is traded at by, you know, like a, a, a PE, you know, a, a, a ratio of how much revenue that company is generating per year. You know, you go into Bitcoin, it gets a little more speculative, but there's still like really like strong fundamental uh, uh, and quantifiable reasoning of why that asset is, is continuing to trade higher. You move out on the risk scale, right, all the way out to meme coins, and you now have this asset where there's le- legitimately no logic involved, right? Like, I think... I think that that is the precipice of a, a meme coin, and and so the opportunity that that offers potentially is just the most unreasonable upside, but also the downside that, that you can you can uh, possibly imagine. So, you know, I I think that there there's a place for them for some traders, but hey, if it's not for you, let's stack up on the ease, baby, because she's still deflationary. Yes, sir. That it is. <clears throat> Let's actually run into, uh, now that we uh, talked about some markets, talked about some meme coins, let's talk about Utes Athletics with Sonny, man. Tell us, bro, how was the party, or not, how was the party, how was the competition between a bunch of MFers and crypto bros 
on the uh, on the courts, man. Any fouls take place? Was there any heated exchanges? Did anybody get you know anybody uh, put up like an NFT against each other, a one on one action, anything like that? <laughs> nah, not not of this one though. Um, it was actually it was actually pretty cool. I mean, definitely um, definitely a good level of uh, competition came out. Others are like obviously all skill level. Um, I think the, the powerful part about it is just like being able to get on the court, um, together. And if, even if you don't hoop that much or whatever, it's like a really cool place to just kind of bond as a community. And there's a lot of conversations happening on the sideline and, um, a lot of connections to be had in a kind of different type of environment. So, yeah, I think overall it was just a lot of fun, um, being able to run with a bunch of people that are, you know, you see on Twitter, you see their PFPs and. Now you get to put a face to the name and uh, just be in a cool environment like that. It was definitely a lot of fun. Now, Sonny, would you mind just taking a step back and educating all of us DGENs on exactly what youth athletics is, what it stands for, and, and kind of where it's going? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So youth athletics is a club that I started under the youths, uh, youths NFT brand um if you guys are familiar with kind of just like how they think about ip um they very much think about it from an individual nft standpoint but also the standpoint of like using the ip of the logos um and kind of full d labs assets if you would um obviously i'm a d god as well and so like for me it's it's kind of about building um building under both um and you see i have a i have a jersey on my d god and that's kind of how I got started into things. I was uh, doing things under D goat, which was kind of a niche group under D gods, made some jerseys and shorts and kind of just expanded from there in terms of wanting to do like overall uh, athletic wear. Uh, And so it kind of started as this idea for like building a brand and athletic wear underneath youths to kind of push the brand forward. Um, And what I found is like through doing an event at NFT LA and then, doing one again at NFT NYC that was around basketball <clears throat> is that there really is kind of like this, almost like this uh, niche market within web three um, for events like these, where, you know, D tens MFers can come together, get on a court um, and just connect and bond in a different way. That's outside of uh, the events like, you know, parties, drinks, etc. Um, and so now where we stand is very much in this place of just like still doing a bunch of athletic wear um, and then just hosting a bunch of these kind of sporting type events where <clears throat> we can play um, sports with one another. Right now it's basketball. Um, we'll definitely be expanding into probably like pickleball, um, kind of like, you know, easy games for people to be able to um, pick up and then potentially doing others down the line at some conferences, et cetera. Um, but yeah, that's kind of, that's kind of where we stand today. And the vision is really just around this kind of community centric, uh, athletic brand, uh, that also hosts events in these, you know, various cities, uh, around the world. It's awesome, man. I love that, bro. Yo, Pinky, <laughs> average, anybody who wants to come up, please come up on the stage, hang out with us. Um, we're talking to Sonny, uh, he's part of Utah Athletics. They did some amazing events. I, I knew they had one going on in, uh, New York and then, um, the yeah it was and then it was cool that i think i think you actually were able to hang out with jordan our ceo um up on the rooftop during the yeah. uh, god's basement party right yeah yeah we uh we ended up going up there you know d god's basement party was a little full uh went up to the rooftop with uh with a couple other homies with actually the d golf uh the d golf homies who's another great club um there's a lot of synergy between us um, and so, yeah, we went up there and then Jordan was in a section. He was like, yeah, join me. Welcome, welcome. And so it was like, it's a cool time where it's just like, you know, especially in that type of environment, like meeting, talking to people, whatever the case may be, you might meet someone for the first time, but it's like, you already have that commonality of like, if you're a D God or for like you guys, if you're a board ape, you mutant nape, whatever the case is, that kind of common connection factor, just like, it kind of like gets you way past any type of like icebreakers or anything kind of right away and you can go right into just like connecting which is cool for sure man 100 percent. actually it was crazy as a, i was with pinky uh walker and i were pinky that night um we were we were on the roof with jordan and then we went to the uh, mirage we had a reservation there for something and um 
yeah, we were up there. We had the table set up. We're hanging out, had a great time. But man, trying to get in that one in the basement, it just wasn't. It, it just didn't seem like bro, worth that, the time. That, yeah, that was crazy. I remember that line, bro. Yeah, that line was very nuts. a lot of lot of, yeah a lot of dudes, <laughs> a lot of dudes in that line. The D Bros <laughs> came out in New York. <laughs> yeah, bro. I was like, that's a long line for a lot of dudes, bro. But I mean, I, yeah, I, was it good? How was the party? I mean, I, I actually didn't end up going to the basement party. I went to the rooftop and just kicked it with Jordan up there and just had a good time, uh, honestly. Um, yeah, you know what? That rooftop of that place was pretty dope, man. I like the, the setup they had over there. Yeah. Those were the view and shit they have, like, wrapping around, bro. That's dope. That was actually a – Actually, yeah. that was probably my favorite part of that, that that hotel, to be honest. Facts. No, that rooftop yeah, Pinky, was dope. Pinky loved the size of the room, so that was his favorite part. Oh, yeah, bro. That's like I, I fit, like, half of my body on the bed. <laughs> Yeah, man, dude, I'm, I'm dude. We're gonna be missing you out here, Walker, bro. Same, homie. Same, dude. Y'all, y'all better, y'all, y'all, y'all better, y'all better tear it up at the Azuki. Well, dude, I mean, know, this is this is my are. hometown. This is my stomping grounds, bro. Vegas <laughs> is my home, so like everyone, it's cool because like everybody, everybody's the whole entire community is coming out to my home. You know what I mean? Like usually, I'm always traveling out, so I can actually disappear from you fuckers and just disappear and like Irish dance out. Yeah, man. I mean, I was. My first flight got canceled, and now I have a I have a Spirit flight, middle seat, no recliner chairs, just nice. to get out. Oh, yeah, bro. Damn, you know you know <laughs> what they say, bro. Like it's it's like getting a bird shit shitting on you, right? It's good luck. So when you get that on a Spirit flight, bro, guaranteed the week's gonna be good. Yeah, bro, it's gonna be a it's gonna be a good time. I'm excited to see uh, the. When do you get in? I'll be in tonight around like eleven thirty. Every time I get like a text from Spirit, hey, I freak out. Guys. I got a babysitter Friday, Saturday, so don't don't let Coco fucking take you guys out. No, 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 and, and take you guys out all night because you guys he will ruin you guys for like three days. No, so no, 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 not this bro. trip. We're Just put your foot down. No, t- t- tonight, tonight you gotta, we're you chilling. Pace yourselves. Yeah, it's real easy to get caught up in the first night, bro. You you land at twelve o'clock, bro. I, I guarantee you, I'm gonna roll up to the hotel at like ten o'clock tomorrow. You guys haven't slept, guaranteed. No shot, no shot. I've got to, I've got to call my therapist at nine o'clock in the morning. There's no shot he would kill mm-hmm. me. Oh, your your therapist's gonna have a lot to hear, bro. You're gonna have a lot to hear. Nope. Right, we've already <laughs> made it. We've already made the decision. There's nothing tonight. Is chill. Just get to the hotel, uh, chill out, and then yeah. Uh-huh, and then we have uh-huh, uh, tomorrow starts uh-huh. the Bing Bong. We're going to Bing Bong tomorrow. Uh, Bing Bong. Is that a, is that in the pool? Is that like a pool thing? Yeah, it's like a private mansion pool party. Cantor's mm-hmm. DJ and the headliner there. Um, yeah, yeah, I was talking to him. He's cool. Yeah, so that should be a good one tomorrow. And then uh, we got the uh, Zuki Cascade during the day, and then the Zuki. Is this Cascade? Is that the is that the dude uh, that's playing? Is Cascade playing at the Zuki thing? He's not playing at Hakkasan, but he's playing during the day at a pool party. If we don't go to that, I know Steve Aoki has a thing there too. But really, I mean, I think really Cascade's to, dope. to try to find the Azuki people is probably going to be like the best bet. But I mean, I'm, dude, I'm down yeah, for whatever man. you guys want to do. Guys, guys, I, this is my hometown, bro. There's literally so like we. It doesn't matter where we go, bro. Like the Zuki things will be cool. We're go obviously we're gonna go to the main event, but bro, there's a lot of shit you can get in into that has nothing to do with NFTs here. So we'll have, we'll have a good time. All right, guys. So y'all are just making like my my eyes water from. Oh, jealousy. don't cry. Like, I'm in the floor. <laughs> I'm in the floor in the corner. No, no, uh, Sonny. I, I really I, I want to hear more though, man. Like so so with the youth at, youth athletics gram. So, like, what are what are kind of your plans on like scaling that um, to to be able to reach you know all of these these different communities within youths, right? Like, if I if I want to participate in your events, like, where where are you centrally located, and are, are you trying to build out that brand with with like partners in the community? Yeah, so I mean, definitely um, people that want to help. I mean, I'm always up for collaborating with people in the community. Uh, like my homie Logan is in here. He's a dope content creator. Um, we've definitely been talking about things. He was there at the first event, NFPLA too. Um, and so there's definitely different opportunities there. Uh, and then as far as like as far as like really scaling it, um, it's it's really one. It's like continuing to do like the the merch part of it and continuing to come out with like fresh designs and designs that also kind of go past the. Um, just like it being NFT merch, if you would. Um, and so we've had a little success with that in terms of just like being an all-inclusive brand, if you would, like people that have come to our events, not all of them are you holders or D-Gods holders or anything like that. And that's definitely something that uh, we encourage. Um, but then like for like for the big three season, for example, that's coming up, 
We're going to be doing a bunch of events in those cities where the big three um, games are being played. And so we're going to host pickup games there. And so centrally located in L.A., but throughout the summer, we'll be in different cities like New York, Miami, uh, Chicago's this weekend. Actually, like you guys talking about Vegas, uh, one of the homies, men from Mizuki, he was trying to get me out to the Vegas party. And I was like bummed I had to miss it because I got a like early morning flight out on Saturday to Chicago. Um, but it's like doing things like that. And so the D gods, uh, team itself are very much, um, empowering me to do that and, and, and kind of supporting in that way. And so I think it's really about like seeing how we could scale out these events and if they become a lot more sustainable where we have, uh, people that are showing up on a, on a monthly basis. Um, then I think we can start thinking about potentially like sponsorships even, and just different ways that we could potentially, um, you know, have brand exposure for other brands that want to get involved through content or their communities or whatever the case may be. But that's kind of where we're at right now. I love that, bro. And so, so kind of two questions. So number one, have you even thought about, are you interested at all in like branching the athletic side out into esports? And then number two, what do you think about the D gods new season coming out? Um, so definitely for esports, I've been, uh, I've talked to a few people about it and I would love to like get in that realm. Um, I'm not too, too familiar with the like esports environment, if you would. Um, but I know that obviously there's different teams and you can do sponsorships and, um, and do different things there. And so I would love to get like more involved. Um, I think it's really just about like, you know, obviously taking the steps of like, it starts with like, I'm personally just like huge passion with basketball. And so it's kind of like started with that and just continuing to expand into other sports. Um, and then, you know, hopefully esports as well. And then, yeah, with, I mean, with D God season three, like I just, I think overall, I just like the way that they think about it in terms of like keeping things fresh and like doing new art. Um, and obviously like going from the D God's art to the dead God's art was a huge catalyst in like, their success um and then being able to kind of continue to essentially just want to be at the forefront of like doing new things within this nft space and pushing what the limits of an nft project could be i think that's the most exciting part when it comes to like them announcing these new seasons and these new waves um it's very similar to like obviously like you know, like a game system announcing like from PS2 to PS3 or for like a new fall fashion line or whatever the case is, it kind of just keeps you um, ahead and fresh in, in the, you know, in the industry that you're in. Sick, man. No, I, you know, it's, I was curious, uh, obviously there's a lot of unknowns when it comes to these different seasons, uh, especially for youths as well, but, um, at least they're building, at least they got their heads down and they're doing stuff. I mean, I feel like lately in the timeline, I haven't seen anything from Frank. Uh, maybe I my, my algorithm's moving around, but I mean, it's been in like meme coin ma- mania, right? And a lot of like, uh, a lot of the timeline has, has really shifted and it obviously from NFTs in general, but do you think, uh, do you think that the season three has the, the viralness component that could potentially bring liquidity back into nfts maybe uh pre pre cycle like pre uh when they you know we were, we're expecting to see liquidity or thinking that liquidity will come after the altcoin run yeah i mean i think a lot of it has to do with like even even with some of the like the quiet times um it's crazy some of the things that like go viral for D gods. I think even a couple, couple weeks ago, it was like this whole like fiasco with like a hoodie. A couple people were upset with it, but it was like a whole topic on the timeline for a little bit. And I think I like even zoom out more than that and realize obviously like between your timeline, my timeline and other people's timeline, it's probably all different in terms of like what people are seeing, even like in just this niche space that we're in. Um, But as far as like NFTs go, I think, I think, what they do really well is obviously that aspect of like virality and like doing a good uh, rollout and able to like grab the attention. Um, And so I think with that, you will see obviously like liquidity enter the space or some people that may be on the sidelines. And I think we've seen that with a couple different projects, just even between like, 
ETH um, and even some on, on Soul. Like as far as some projects that are coming out, I just don't think it's been as like crazy as obviously like during the bull run, right? Like right now it's very much just like the most quality projects are going to like still be successful right now. Um, if you think of like a project like a Clanosaurs or um, even a project like Mad Lads or something like that on Soul, where they've been able to be kind of like successful through this time and, and have their own milestones. Um, so I think it's one of those things where it's like for D-Gods in general, I think for them, like they will be able to attract that, attract that market and attract whatever liquidity might be on the sideline. Um, but if it, as far as like it trickling down to other communities, I don't know if we're going to really see that until more so um, when we do it, hopefully <laughs> get to that like next bull run. But I don't think like NFTs are going anywhere for sure. Oh, they're here to stay just in what capacity. I mean, Pinky, Pinky, I mean, you've been collecting for a long, you've been collecting for a while. Obviously you, you've been OG on the set of coins, but you know, like when it comes to like next level of like NFTs, what do you think, man? Do you think like, do you think it's always going to just be more of a digital receipt with maybe potentially a pic- pictures attached to it? Or do you think like there's a next level of NFT like that we haven't even like uncovered yet? I think, of course, there's that, you know what I mean? I obviously, there's, like, it feels like the very beginning of something massive, because, like, being in the industry for a long time, and what what NFTs did this last bull run, bro, like, I don't think people really fully understand, like, the magnitude of how powerful they are as far as, like, hold on, buddy, I'm sorry, I'm at, like, a jumpy place with my kids right now. Um, like, the magnitude of, of, like, onboarding that NFTs did to just, like, general public, and there's a lot of people that got into NFTs that don't know shit about crypto. Like, they don't, they don't understand the first thing about crypto when they got into the NFT space. And there's a lot of people like that. So like, obviously it's going to evolve. Right. But I kind of like, I kind of think that like where it's at is fucking cool. Like I kind of like where it's sitting. Obviously the price sucks right now and every, you know, liquidity is not there, but like the way that NFTs kind of came about and like what they stand for and like the, the, um, the tribalism of them, like there's, it, I don't think it needs to really change much, man. I think it works. Right. I think it's just a matter of, of just like onboarding and people understanding the technology. And then, I mean, think about it, right? Like the funnest shit in the world is going to be in real life events, right? Like I've been in crypto for fucking seven, eight years. And I would much rather go to an NFT conference any day of the week than any, any regular crypto conference. I don't even care about those anymore. Uh, the only shit I go to is like NFT conference because it's fun, bro. You meet people, you have younger people, you have enthusiastic people, artists. It's like, I think it's, I think NFTs are going to be a massive part of the next bull run. I think a lot of people are kind of like down on them right now just because of the liquidity and everyone's saying they're dying, but I think they're going to come back like roaring back. But obviously I think they're going to, you know, evolve into something we can't even think of. Yeah. Mark. Dude, I, I love that. I, I love that. Ty. And uh, Pinky, and, and so, you know, when, when I look at it right now, man, it's like, you know, and, and we, we were, we were speaking with unity, you know, quite some time back and, you know, some, some people there are like, hey, you know, like, we don't really see, you know, the, the evolution of like NFTs into gaming, right? Because like it creates like such a like cumbersome process for the game developers themselves for like them to make these assets, you know, interchangeable between the games actually makes it harder for them to monetize those individual assets. And I mean, dude, over the last couple of weeks, we have seen Nike, Nike swoosh. So so I think I think it's like Nike dot swoosh. Um, yes, it's, it's one it's it's one of, of the Nike brands that, that have a blockchain and NFT element. They did a collaboration with Fortnite like two days ago. Um, I mean that that that's that's incredible, right? We we've seen Grand Theft Auto come out and say that the that the the, the money in game will have real world value, right? And and so I think it's one of those cases where it's really slow. And then it's yeah. all it's all at once. And when one of these game developers adopt NFTs and allow for these gamers, I mean Fortnite over the past six months, I think they've done over three billion dollars yeah. worth of in-game sales. Yeah, and the so first, I actually had a long conversation about this with you because you know that you know you know I'm developing a game that, that you know involves NFTs and all that. So I, I had a Badass. talk with the guy. Yeah, yeah, I had a guy. I had a talk with a guy that was. Like, like way more into gaming than me. Like, I, you know, I'm I'm developing a game with a company, but I'm by no means like a, a big gamer, right? Like, I I have to ask other people because that's not my expertise. 
But he was telling me, he said, you know, the re- the problem with crypto and gaming, like, let's, for instance, like um, the Grand Theft Auto thing, right? He said the problem with it is, is gaming is so large right now. When you start incorporating things like NFTs and tokens, that doesn't do anything but give value to the, the consumer, right? But when you have like a V-Bucks or something like that in like a Fortnite, why would you why would you move away from that, right? Because that's all money in-house. That money doesn't leave, right? When you start having tokens, that money can be pulled out. So so the, the user is actually rewarded, right? What they're doing right now, they don't need to do that, right? Like, they're, they're massive. They don't need to go and have this other economy where people can trade and they, they, their coin can be worth money and they can pull it and suck it out of the, the entire market that, that they've created. So what I think it's going to be is it's going to have to be the other way around, right? I think people, I think crypto is going to have to kind of barge its way into the gaming sector and then make it needed, right? Because I don't think the gaming se- sector is going to, they don't want that, right? They, they already have their economies. So like, and the problem is, is like, if, when you look at it from like an outside view, you think that people in crypto are gamers just by, just because they, you know, it's similar. You're on computers all day. You're doing this, that. But the, the funny thing. No. Did y'all, did y'all, can y'all hear? Can y'all hear A lot of places. There? Yeah, sorry, can you hear me now? You're back. You're back now. It's not like you got a phone call coming. Yeah, yeah, no, no. I, like, I, I've been going to gaming uh, conventions and stuff, and I'm, I'm starting to realize that they're very separated, man, the gaming industry and, and crypto, right? So there's, like, a big bridge there that needs to be gapped, and someone just has to do it right. But I don't think it's going to be from the gaming side moving over. I think someone from crypto is going to have to make it work and make the world see, and then it'll kind of bleed over into that. No one's really done it correctly yet. So I think, uh, yeah, man, I... I I'm like very optimistic about it, but I'd like to, I'd like to kind of see because I like the Grand Theft Auto thing. When I heard that too, I was like pretty stoked. I was like, this is awesome, right? Like, if they, if a massive game like that actually incorporates some form of token that where you can earn, but then I, I dug in a little deeper, and that's not what they're doing. They're they're basically saying that in the game they're gonna have a token that's like a cryptocurrency, but it's not going to be an actual cryptocurrency that you can like go and trade on an exchange or something. It'll just be an in-game token. That's basically the same thing as like a V bucks. Well, so, if they, if they build it right though, Pinky, it could, it could be an easy like transition into crypto if they're, but it sounds yeah. like it's going in the right direction. Yeah, no, no, a hundred percent. I think uh, that's what I'm saying, right? Like I think the door just needs that has to be burst down from the, the opposite direction than what people think. I don't think it's going to be the gaming industry because they, like I said, they don't need to, right? Like they, if you incorporate a token into a massive game like a, like a whatever, like a Grand Theft Auto, that money can be taken out, right? Like that money can be taken out of the economy. But when you when you're dealing with the in-game currency, people just buy V bucks and the money goes straight to them. There's no reason to have anything else. And and that's a, that's a huge catalyst. Another one is the regulatory issues. Yeah. So like right now, right now with it with it with an in-game. Uh, you know, it was an in-game like V Bucks exchange, like a your virtual currency exchange, whatever you want to call it. The the regulatory environment is much much more clear, and uh, and, it, and it's actually very uh, it's it, it's 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 very net positive for those issuers. Where if you move into NFTs or crypto at the moment, um, it's extremely unclear um, and potentially devastating to the economy that you build around it. But it's like, man, when we when we look right, like, like let's take let's take CS:GO for example. I think it was a, a, a few months ago, there was a skin for a gun that sold for a few hundred thousand dollars. And this wasn't like a one-off skin. I think there was like 3,000 of them, right? I mean, that's, that's, that's the size of, you know, a, 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 a relatively large uh, crypto project. And, and for, for that to sell for that kind of money and the licensing ah. agreement that these individuals are getting, Right, it's 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 a very limited license that can be pulled at any time. They have no ability to use or to monetize that asset out of game. And again, I, I think it's very slow and all at once. Yeah. Because as soon as these gamers see the power and, and the yeah. ability for them to own and monetize these assets and use 100%. them and to brand across their digital persona, they're going to yep. say, "If you're not going to give us that ability." We're not going to spend our exactly. time in your ecosystem. And that's what it is, right? It's about it's about getting the user to understand that that's where the value comes, right? And then you have to change, right? Like those games have to change once the user wants it. So it's all about getting the user on board. And, uh, you know, obviously, I was, talking, I was speaking more about token economies, but like NFTs, I think, are a whole different ballgame, right? Like there are so many use cases in-game that make sense. 
for a big company to come and start using NFTs uh, aside from like a token, right? Because there's just so many more use cases and it actually makes sense. And I think it's a way easier sell and people will understand it more. And that's what I was saying with NFTs overall, like the onboarding that, that they, they've done in the past fucking two to three years is amazing. And I think it's just going to keep growing, man. Like NFTs, I think are going to, it's it's always that thing like you don't think of, right? It's always like I didn't see NFTs coming the way they did. I like I've heard about them the last bull cycle, but nobody saw them taking like sucking that much liquidity out of the market, dude. I I truly believe that Bitcoin would have hit 100k if it wasn't for NFTs coming into the, you know what I mean? All that retail money went into NFTs and into like altcoins and stuff. So I think it's gonna be 10x of that, man. I wouldn't be surprised this next this next week. That's true. Look what we have in the house here, Miss Jess Haley. You know, this girl is absolutely crushing it. Moved to Tampa, down that, across the bridge from me. Never get to see her unless she just shows up at the Tampa events. But, you know, yeah, I got on one of her spaces. It had way too many smarter people than me. And uh, here she is just just over here peeping, and, peeping in the space. Why don't you go and say what's up, Jess? Are you, uh, I saw you were family, I think, on Insta. So are you back in, are you back in uh, Tampa or what's your deal? Come say hi. I'm actually uh, leaving today here in a couple hours to go meet Pinky in Vegas. So really excited to to get out there and see the Suzuki fam. Um, but yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be cool. What's going on, Jess? How are you, dude? I I'm stuck at the airport. I've had like my flight's been delayed like 18 times. So I'm chilling. <laughs> All right, I, mine got canceled this morning when I, had, I canceled three hours. I, I was I actually should be in the air right now going to Vegas, but uh, no, nah, it nah, there must be something going on. And last time when I was there going to LA and back, the Delta out of all people had the worst baggage situation. Like they are like they can't hire enough baggage, like people to throw your like big luggage around or on, on conveyor belts or something. It was like a line out the door. You guys both had your flights uh, delayed. Yeah, mine's yeah. delayed right now too. I, I Damn, just flew man, in to crazy. see my family like four days ago and I had 12 hours worth of delays. I canceled it and went on a different airline and still got delayed. So I don't know what's going on, but these guys are, are not, <laughs> they're messing with my emotions today. <laughs> yeah. It's definitely not the weather here, man. The weather's beautiful out here. And I think it's like tomorrow's like 87 degrees. It's like the nicest day of the summer. Oh. I don't think it's coming from Vegas. Uh -huh. Thank you. I think it has to do with Florida. Yeah, definitely not. There's something to do with Florida. Yeah, it's definitely. Florida. It's definitely Florida. Yeah, and it's crazy. I was on I was on United. I had a nice aisle on both flights, nice ex exit row. Now I'm sitting in Spirit Airlines, middle middle seat, all the way in the back of the bus. I'm in the back. <laughs> Let's go. It's Let's good for go. you. It's good for you sometimes, bro. By the rattly bathrooms, by the screaming children. <laughs> oh, Spirit Airlines, man. They're the best. You ask for water, and they look at you like you're stupid. They're like, that would be $45, man. <laughs> Yeah, you know what the you know what the move is is you pay, you just pay because I'm I'm a, I'm just like six five so I can't, I got to get like a bigger seat so what you do is you just pay for the exit row and spirit and then it's not that bad like it's because I, I was on United like recently and it was the worst flight ever they I missed my flight they wouldn't let me on and so I had to run over to Spirit and like just hop on a flight and then I just paid the extra twenty bucks for the extra leg room and it's actually not a bad flight. That's actually smart. That's really smart. I feel like Spirit is taking over all the non-stops out of Tampa, too. And I'm, I don't know what it is, but they have, when I was looking at flights to Miami, I was looking at flights to Vegas, looking at flights to L.A., every every single one of them was Spirit Airlines if you wanted to fly non-stop. I was like, what is going on? Spirit is taking over all of the, the Tampa non-stops. You're, you're not lying. I, I thought that I moved to <laughs> this airport because, I mean, like, I'm 15 minutes away and, like, that – that was the whole reason I moved here in the first place. But I'm thinking MCO, a.k.a. Orlando. I, I'm afraid to look yeah. at the prices because I know I'm going to be so jealous of what MCO is doing and I'm going to make a move to Orlando. That would be weird. That's farther away from the beach. True. But what up? So how was your uh, how was your space this uh, last Tuesday? I saw you had – I didn't see guests, but I knew that like the previous week you had some freaking ballers on here. You had Grant Cardone and his brother, right? Yeah, it, this past week it was crypto related, and I had so many guests that I couldn't fit it on a. Where, where the fuck was my text? What? Whoa, 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 whoa! <laughs> um, so no, no, seriously though, I wish I could have like a bigger panel because I had so many people say yes to me last minute, and then also say like, "Hey, I'm gonna be on for like 20 minutes. I'm gonna come in late, and I'm gonna drop off, and I'm gonna." 
I was like, forget it. I'm putting myself on a flyer. That's it. <laughs> I know I'm trying to figure out who's going to be on this or not, but uh, it was it was a good it was a good last minute space. It was um, I kind of had to throw it together. I was traveling, and so I kind of didn't prepare fully. But um, the week before it was really awesome. It was yeah, Grant Cardone and a bunch of like macro analysts, and it was it was a really good space. All right. And next week should be really. Awesome I'll remember too. that, Jess. I'll remember that. I saw you literally. That weekend at the Tampa Entrepreneurs down the street at American I Social, know, I and I don't get an invite to speak on the space. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go speak in Vegas. I'm just gonna go to Vegas and jump I on really, the stage. I really thought you were traveling now because I thought you. I saw you saying you were going somewhere, um, Vegas or somewhere. I don't the last know one was LA. Day, Went to you. Tech Week. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It was LA. That's what it was. That's what it was. You're always on a plane. Every time I see your story on Instagram, I'm like, this dude does not stay put. I love it. I mean, it's it's uh, we're we're an up and coming tech company and and in Web three, so it's like if we don't have constant like the more touches right now. I mean, it used to be seven touches would equal like a deal or at least get like that person in the door, yeah. but now it's like twelve touches because there's so much shit. And I think that the one thing you cannot replace is human like face to face interaction versus like seeing all the bullshit on the internet. So. I, I'm a firm believer that the more that people see that we're the real deal and the tech that we're building is here to to really uh, be a utility for the space, they're gonna we'll convert more uh, convert more you know we'll we'll be able to sell out which no one is able to do and that's the goal. I completely agree with that and I completely understand it. Up until two months ago, I was on a plane every other week, so I can't really say anything to you. And I, like when it comes to being in person at these Web three events, there's nothing that you can't replace IRL. You just can't. Like, you can't build a community unless you actually experience people's energy and, and are surrounded by that. So I completely agree, and I've, I'm cheering you on from afar, I promise. No, I appreciate it, and <clears throat> would love to uh, would love to definitely have you. You know, even if it's not me, but I'll tell you what, if you're looking for, like, um, you know, a, go- a go-getter, like, smart, smart, technical TA guy, Walker here, part of our AVP on our team, He's he, he yeah. knows like he's ra- he's had his own uh firm before and um yeah I think like he would be in one of those like one of those more financial like more traditional side of things he could definitely give us some great insight um especially if it's more of like a technical analysis for even like when it comes to like the S and P the spy or uh, even when it comes to crypto yeah would love that would absolutely love that I'm always I mean they're they they ask me to switch it up every week so that I don't have like the same people on which makes my job a little bit harder but also it constantly switches up the space and kind of cross pollinates everybody's audiences so what i'm always looking for technical guys and people that can see more of the macro stuff as well just in all across all markets so would love 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 that intro yeah because what do you, you guys are averaging like a couple what was like anywhere from like 500 to like 1500 people of space now yeah, I think our biggest one was up to like 2,200 at one time um, and about 10,000 that watch it like through the week. But um, I would say on average, it's anywhere from, yeah, five 600, the low low amount to a little bit over 1,100. That's great. No, it's great to meet you, Jessica. Thank you. Uh, thank you for stopping in. Um, no, I appreciate that, Chris. And, you know, as Chris was saying, you know, my background is like in traditional finance. Uh, I opened up a firm and then I got into private equity um, and then rotated into the, to the, to the tech startups. But, you know, like the fundamental basis, like of, like my knowledge and my beliefs, like rely, you know, around like a true understanding of like what money is and how it works. Now, I think there's such a fundamental flaw in our society where people go to school for, you know, 20 to 25 years of their life. Many people get hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt. Job, all to make money, but they don't understand how it works. They run money against liability, against dis- depreciating assets, and they get into this hole that they can't dig out of. And you know, when when you look at the the, the money supply, right? We, we've quadrupled the M1 money supply in the last four years, right? Since, since COVID, there's four times the amount of dollars in circulation um, as previous. I mean, you know, also. The, the, the purchasing power of the dollar has depreciated by over 90% in the last 100 years. Um, in 1700, the, the value that you could get for $1, you would need $63 today to, to, to purchase that same asset. So I think it's so critical um, for, for individuals to really like take a step back 
and realize like how to utilize and how to deploy the capital that they're working so hard uh, to get towards. And I mean, I think that's why Bitcoin is such an incredible technology. You know, arguably, in my opinion, Bitcoin is the first technology in human history that facilitates global bilateral trade in a trustless manner. And and that, to me, is like the first promise that we've ever had of, of a true opportunity for economic freedom. Um, so, yeah, Jess, any, any time, hit me up. I'll follow you. Would love to uh, participate. In other no, words, I, Walker's, I, I, Walker's smart as hell. Yeah, <laughs> I see that. And where are you from, Walker? I can hear the – I just love the <laughs> So I'm, I have the little southern twang that comes out. you got to get a glass of wine. Right? Where are you from? So and, and actually my grandparents, they lived in Virginia for like the past – 20 years my grandfather built a cabin up there with his hands in, in laurel fork virginia i don't know if, if you know that. Um, but I'm, I'm from alabama that's awesome yeah i i hear your southern twang i love it no i i've been talking to a couple of the guys you know this isn't necessarily going to get as big a numbers when i first started this like six weeks ago it was more so just to honestly be immersed in the space of finance in general and I figured what's the best way to learn as fast as humanly possible because I got recruited into this job was to you know host panels with some of the best experts across all you know financial sectors and ask them really dope questions and just kind of immerse myself in this in this world but uh, what I've started to realize that there's so many people that don't understand this ecosystem this whole financial ecosystem I know I don't like the way that you just described what you just described there's so many people that also don't understand that and they don't know how to deploy their little soldiers out there that they're working so hard for and they don't know how to leverage. And I mean, I'm over here learning too. So I really would love to host some type of educational space that really teaches the, and, and helps people understand the financial ecosystem and the, there's rules to the game, right? And they don't teach you that shit in school. And I wish that they did, but they don't. So I would love to host something. Maybe like a we could just do something like on a an off day where it's like understanding the ecosystem of money and understanding the shit they don't teach you in school, essentially, and how to deploy these hard earned dollars that we're all, you know, especially in this time. Like there's so many different things going on in this time that is obviously different than any landscape that we've ever been in because of the Fed printing money and because of the, the market and all these different directions. So yeah, we, we should put something together. I would love, love, love to recruit into that to help people really understand that and understand more myself. Yeah, that's you know, crazy, Walker. A lot of like the, like there's a mixture. Like I would say, and Jess's spaces, she has like legit, like uh, traditional finance or in, like um, interested people on Twitter. It's almost like a bleed into non-crypto Twitter. It, it, it's kind of, it's really unique. I, it's one of the few spaces I've actually seen that that mixture versus when it comes to like anything that even sometimes even drips in the crypto or even what the space that I spoke on with her was more of like, gosh, that was back with like, we had Tom Crown. There's a bunch of Bitcoin maxis in there and stuff. And it was a, you know, bearish or bullish. And uh, yeah, you know, it's funny if you listen to that recording, uh, the, the ones that were bearish are probably uh, are, are kind of rethinking their strategy because I'm pretty sure a lot of them. Like we're expecting this not to happen, and that it would have to follow exactly the the, the T, uh, TA, and there wouldn't no, there wouldn't have been any breakouts. So that was also interesting to, to hear too. Was the bearish bullish? I thought that and that, that that space lasted for an hour, and by the time I even got to speak, I had it was like it was like six fifty five. She, I, I couldn't even get like two words in, but uh, <laughs> but no, I did I did get some words in. It was a good time, um, and it's and I, what I love about that space too that they run is uh, it creates that. You know, when you run a space for a certain amount of time and you bring a lot of talent in the same room and everybody wants to say stuff, it creates that uh, it creates that necessity or that want. And I bet Jess can say it better than me because she told me that and, and it really opened up my eyes to it. It's like there's that, that that interest that people want to come back that next week because they, you know, because they didn't get everything that that previous week. So I thought that was a great strategy that you've in, implemented as well. Yeah, no, for sure. People, people are showing up every week now. It's been really fun to kind of see what – I didn't know what was going to happen, to be honest with you. I just knew that when I got recruited into this company, um, Verified Investing, and Gareth has a big following, and he said, Jess, I want you to start actually, like, 
he was like, you need one, you need to get a Twitter Two, you need to start using it. Three, you need to like actually start doing some stuff on it to build some influence for yourself because you're a part of this, you know, brand and we all have influence on Twitter and you don't <laughs> like, okay, so let me host some panels. And I started leveraging his name and he's got, you know, more of a TA background. So, and he does a lot of stuff in you know, stocks and real estate and uh, just all commodities, all that stuff. So it's definitely more traditional, but he also does a lot of crypto stuff. So I was able to kind of leverage his name. I, I hop into a lot of these bigger spaces that I see running and I message the people that I hear speaking and I just say, Hey guys, um, love your perspective on the space right now. I work with Jared Soloway. We host a space every Tuesday night. Would love to uh, have you on the panel. And I get answers back from some of the people that have like, like I don't know, hundreds of thousands of people that follow them. And they'll just respond and they'll say, heck yeah, like let send me an invite. And it's kind of crazy. I had no idea that some people were going to actually say yes. But we've definitely had some cool like perspective like just like you said like we have a lot of you know cool debates with bears versus bulls and a lot of tas and a lot of it's been really cool to see kind of what's shown up i had no idea what to expect six weeks ago when i started these and then um i've actually got robert kiyosaki coming on one coming up soon so that'll be really cool um but yeah it's it's been an adventure that's for sure awesome well thanks for thanks for coming by and showing with us it sounds like you're in the airport and i can understand it's like it's good to get in, uh, get get out of that airport mindset while you're as much as you can and just talk to other people. <laughs> it's like it's, it's so it's so funny. As soon as I got on Twitter Spaces and I saw you were on a space, I was like, I was like, let me go say hi to friends. <laughs> I appreciate that. Yeah, thanks thanks for uh, thanks for having me up. But uh, yeah, come come please come play on Tuesday and Walker. I'll definitely reach out and let you know. We're, I'm gonna have a crypto space probably in two weeks, so let's let's definitely set up um, for you guys to come up with the speaker panel for sure. Yeah, I mean it'd be cool, like especially if you want to get more of like business, uh, like people that are using crypto or NFTs. Like our buddy Sonny here, who's one of our guests today, um, he's building a youth athletics, which is a part of an NFT uh, company. It's kind of like a like an athlete. You know, he can probably explain more, but of everything, but like basically creating just getting people outside, getting basketball games and, and really build on the, the big three that they're a part of. And I, that's, I, I think that's an aspect that especially traditional people that would not even like, that's the next level for them probably when it even comes to this whole thing. So if it ever, you know, I, that's a great person here to Sunny to connect with when it comes to taking like an existing community and building on top of it. And uh, that's what most people or most community or most NFT collections don't have, um, outside of a select few, I would say board apes, D gods, youths, and you know a handful of the other blue chips, uh, and I think that's only going to grow as the NFT, the next NFT cycle hits. Like Pinky said, this next one should be huge, and I agree with them. And I think you're going to see these these people that are communities, different types of community people. I mean, there's so many biker communities out there. Why, you know, like all these people are going to transition to a digital world, and we're basically right now, Sunny and other people are building out the landscape. And kind of like that that handbook for how to do it. So once that that's done, it'll it should be a very seamless experience for these traditional clubs. I mean, let's think even the bingo club should have an you know like there should be an NFT bingo club for for different stuff, man. So I'm excited to see the traditional people start to uh, start to, to to have a little bit more trust, and, and that, that comes through that early adopter comes through. I think Twitter Spaces like the verified investing ones. So anyway, all right, guys, I've got to, uh, so I love it. Oh, go ahead, Jess. I said, that's so dope. I love it. I love it. I really, I want to hear more about what you're, you, what you guys are up to in all of your different projects. For sure. So, I mean, just to, just to give a quick rundown, you know, one of the, one of the core focuses of our company, I mean, overall we're, we're a technology company, right? So, so we're really trying to build, um, solutions to allow this space to evolve into what we deem as the metaverse, which is, you know, gaming, social media, right? All these digital interactions that we have. I, I think the concept of the metaverse and the way that it was portrayed, I hate to use the word scam, but, you know, I think that's really where it was last cycle. It's this big overarching idea that the individuals could see the world moving towards, um, but I think it was portrayed in, in a way that was just really not feasible. 
um, and, and probably you know won't be for for some time. But with Metatope, we saw this this opportunity, right? Like you 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 look at at individuals. I mean, even take us for example, right? I mean, I, I'm 26 years old. You know, I grew up with dial up internet. I remember moving into to like Hotmail um, and, and different URL handles and MySpace and Facebook. And, and really like what that is, is like the evolution of our digital identity and our, our persona online. And you look at a kid today, they take their allowance, you know, they take the, the available dollars that they have and they put it into a Fortnite skin. Why? Well, it's because they have the most valuable interactions with the people that they love online, All right? And, and so what we have done is, is we've created an, an infrastructure and a technology stack to allow for these digital identities, whether it be uh, an, an in-game identity or a NFT, you know, a PFP, whatever it is, to, to allow for the individuals to fully embody that asset across all of their digital experiences. So, you know, for, for the example of like the NFT space, with the Metatope technology stack, you're going to be able to take that board eight. You're going to be able to embody it fully head to toe with the, the front facing camera on your phone. You're going to be able to use that across your, your social media, your streaming, uh, your gaming, um, and your metaverse interactions. And, and what we believe is, is this is an incredible opportunity um, for, for the consumer right, to, to take this, this thing and this idea uh, that, that, that they've loved, right? And, and a board ape, as it stands, is, is really just like a static image. Um, and, and for the community to be able to become the voice of the brand in real time, to take that board ape and to be able to brand it in real time with legacy brands, right? Nate, look, look at your, your favorite clothing brand in the store. Be able to take those assets, put it on to, to, to yours in real time, um, and to go across these digital interactions and, and to kind of, you know, have a digital flex. In, in a really like fun and, and sustainable way. So it, it creates an amazing opportunity for the community themselves, for the holders, and for the brands that want to integrate with Web3. So that is our, our core focus, um, and we're going to continue to build out. We've got a, we've got a lot of other things cooking, uh, but that's, uh, that's where we are for now. I love that. I love, love, love that. Thank you so much for sharing. Uh oh, everybody got muted, Jessica. You're you're so welcome. I uh, really appreciate you coming by and spending time with us. We do Tope Talk every single Thursday, same time, same place. Uh, we would love to have you guys. We got Pinky back on the panel. That means he he's got he's got some alpha for us. Nah, bro. I was just listening, to, you know, to what you were talking about with Metatop, man. I can't wait for you guys to like show the world that because I've seen some little glimpses of what you guys are doing with that, and that's some like next level shit, bro. Like. When it comes, and, and what you were talking about is like the, ne- the next generation. I'm, I'm a lot older than you, Walker. You're saying you're 26, bro. You're, you're a fucking baby. What are you talking about? Dude, dial up, bro. I remember, dude, I remember going on LimeWire and downloading a song for like three, three and a half days. And then when you, when you play it, it's just like some dude moaning or something. I remember those days. You don't know nothing about that. But anyway, like my kid, I have a 10 year old son, right? And he is like, so in tuned with what is, is happening with technology to a point where like, I literally ask him shit. Like when I'm anything I do, I go straight to my 10 year old and I'm like, what do you think of this? Can you, can you understand this? Is this easy? And it's, it's crazy that the, the, like, that's the generation, right. That's, that's coming up. That's going to get all of this stuff. Like the 10 year olds now they're going to be 15, 16 in a few years in the next few bull cycles. And they're going to be the, the guys running shit. Right. And it's like the transition is it's here, right. It's just, the kids, it's, it's so easy for them for, in, in that age, that age range. And I think like the next step is what you guys are doing as far as, like you said, like branding, right? Like, and, and I just can't wait for you guys to show that shit to the world. It's getting there, bro. Really? Oh yeah. Can't wait. Yeah. I've got the, uh, I just got the, uh, uh, the meta, like we have a bunch of versions regarding like uh, desktop or mobile, but I do have, uh the, the newest version of the app i'll show it to you in vegas um yeah it's, it's like from what you saw last time it's a night and day difference on track yeah, stuff, which is great. You, are, are you guys like do you guys have like um like a kind of a time frame that you guys are looking at as far as like 
you know, putting out the, the, the beta or whatever? Do you guys, have you guys, are you guys just kind of. I'll let Walker kind of jump on that one. Yeah, no, man, it's, it's a great question. And, you know, honestly, we're, we're very fortunate, you know, our, our parent company um, is, is the largest direct response media agency in the country. So they focus, you know, on linear and OTT, like television, Hulu, specialize in celebrity endorsements. Um, and, and so there, there's a very like out, a, a long-term outlook on, on the branding and marketing opportunity uh, within this space and like the, the, dis- the digitization of media slots. I won't, I won't get too far, but we see, we see a huge play there. Um, but so like, you know, with, with, with what we're doing, we've quantified the metrics in which we feel like we can go to the market with a sustainable launch. And we have a, a very long-term outlook um, and a very bullish outlook on this space. But the reality is today, um, if, if we came out and introduced, you know, a bunch of NFTs, you know, it, it's, it's, it's probably, it's not the time. We're going to devalue the technology um, and, 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 and the innovation that we've built. So, so currently we're, we're really like strategizing on, on how we can introduce this technology in a way uh, where, where the consumer can, can have a, you know, a really good experience and, and we can create, um, you know, a, a very, a very understandable, uh, like timeline and roadmap and evolution of our company. So I, I'm, I'm very confident in the next couple of months, we're going to be ready uh, to introduce that to, to the space and, and to really define exactly what a launch looks like for us. Cause dude, we've been, we've been building this thing for two years. You know, and we, we knew it going in. Like we, you know, we, we weren't naive in the yeah. fact that, hey, this, this is probably the top. Yeah. We believe in this. We're, we're, we're willing and, and, and we're ready to build through the bear. And that's exactly Smart. what we're doing. Yeah. And, and we're going to do, we're going to introduce this technology when the time's right yeah. in, in a great way. From, from so, what I like, yeah, well, what, you know, the, the advice I have obviously is because I've been in the game for a long time. And when you guys, when you have a product that's like what you guys have and what you've been building, that's, you know, innovative and, and a massive project, right? Let's, let's not beat around the bush. This is like a big, big project, you know? So like timing in the market is literally 95% of everything, right? If you time things correctly and you have a really good product, that shit can fly. You can have a piece of shit product in a, with good timing and it can fly. But you could have a great product and you mistime it and it will tank. So, like, timing, I think, is more important than anything in this crypto market. And especially when you have a monster like you guys have. Like, and trust me, because I've been building all through the bear market too, right? And I'm finished with the game. I've, I've done I'm waiting right now. Like, my entire team is waiting. We're, we're like, okay, it's done now. It took us uh, about 18 months to build. And now it's a waiting game. And we're not going to rush anything. We're going to wait for the right time and we're going to launch and we're going to do it right. And that's just kind of from experience, right? Because I've been a part of projects that have done the opposite. They've, they've launched at the wrong time with a great product. And it's very depressing <laughs> what can happen in a bear market if you don't launch correctly. So I think you guys are doing it right, man. And you know what I mean? Just keep it up, bro. It's awesome. That's why these, uh, this is, that's why, like Jess said, it's like the in-person stuff, it's just getting in front of uh, as many of these community people, people that already understand Web3 in general is extremely important right now. Because as we build, the more touches will just make a – it'll make a smoother transition of somebody who might be like, oh, I remember that app. Oh, I remember seeing somebody. Even if they don't remember me, hopefully the impression that I leave with them, showing them technology they've never seen before, will be enough that it when they see other people talking about it or they see us when we're in our sprint towards launch and they get a bunch of content thrown in front of them, that uh, you know it, the, it'll be that extra push for them to go and mint that NFT or become you know part of our community. And that's really uh, what, you know, that's what I believe, like, my job is. So, guys, I got to walk my dog real quick. I'm going to leave my phone here. Uh, just give a heads up. I'll be away. Yeah, man. And, to, you know, Walker, you're, you're like a beast with the TAs, man. So, I'm, I know you, you're pretty good with, like, understanding the timing of the market. So, yeah, man. Hey, guys, I'm hopping on my flight. But I just want to thank all of you guys. Um, and thank you for explaining all of that. And uh, I'm just so grateful to have met you guys. So, I'll talk to you guys soon. See you, Jess. Safe travels. Hi guys. Thanks, I'll see you in Florida. Hey. No, right. It is like you know, T- TA is like such a such a powerful tool, and you know, one of like our our biggest our our biggest like liability as an individual 
um, as like a, as a human that's like trying to trade the market is our emotions. All right. And it, it's so funny because that's exactly how the market moves is with human sentiment. Um, you know, and as bullish as I want to be right now, there, there's also, you know, like for anybody that hasn't ever looked at it, like the fear and greed index is an incredible uh, tool, you know, to understand the, the psychology of like where people are in the market right now. And, and it, like, the, the, you know, you, you can you, you look at the past because the past is really all that we have to use for the information that we speculate and that we build models around. But at the same time, the past is no true indication of the future. Right. And I'm like, I'm again, like I I talked about all this inflation, right? I mean, the past three years, we've seen over 15% inflation here in the U S right. And in many places globally, it's much more astronomical than that. And, and it's like, well, You know, with this type of inflation, how do we honestly even see a future of economic prosperity, um, you know, for anyone really in in the current standing? Because every country in the world except six hold the U.S. dollar in in their global reserves to back up the value of their their local currency. And what I believe is is going to happen is is I think that artificial intelligence, robotics and, and machine learning are going to put us into the most deflationary time in human history. I can, I can see the price of goods and services over the next 20 years decreasing by 90 plus percent. And, you know, there, there, there's all these catalysts though, right? That, that, are, that are so, so hard to comprehend. And, and honestly, anybody that says that they have it a hundred percent figured out there, they're just a liar. All right. So, like as we move into this like more like digital age and, and, and this more, you know, robust economic uh, system, you know, because 50 years ago, it was it was much easier to understand, you know, like how the flow of capital would look. And, you know, you fast forward to the day and, and the government's paying one point one point something billion dollars a day in the interest alone on their debt. Right. Like how how could we even get into an economic, uh, an ep- economic cycle where we're not printing essentially infinite money. And, and really the, the, the only answer um, is deflation. So with, with all that being said, it's like, be careful, you know, and, and really question yourself, right? You can think something and you can have conviction, but a lot of times I, I see like the, the intelligence of an individual is like, Somebody who's able to see and argue both sides of the conversation at the same time. And although like things are looking good right now in, in ways, right, in, 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 in like the growth that we've seen um, in, in equities and crypto and like we're starting to feel back bullish. But the reality of the situation is interest rates are going up. Government spending's going down right on the books. Like the, and, and they've, they've been funding, right? They were talking about quantitative tightening, and they've still been printing money through all this shit. And it's, pro- it, it's probably, in, in my opinion, likely to continue. Um, but but ju- just be careful because the, the, the fear and greed index, we're at extreme greed right now, right? We were just talking about how we're in a bear market, and we're already back at extreme greed with interest rates you know, relatively high inflation through the fucking roof so yeah you know just just be careful and realize you know black swan events can happen they've happened numerous times without crypto and be prepared for those days because if you put yourself in a situation to truly be greedy when other people are fearful you are going to make the gains that 99 percent of individuals will never make This has been a a great space, sunny, pinky, derby, average, all of the homies. Thank y'all so much for being here. If anybody has any final thoughts or anything they would like to bring up, please feel free. And if not, I think it's time to shut it down. We'll see you here next week. We love you from the Metatope. Yeah, cyberpunk. Mix my e with polygon Pythagoras.
with a match. Yeah, put those cash. Yeah. I seen a metaverse through meta, told my eyes a megaphone Customize my empty skin to optimize my flesh and bone Phase 1 evolution, revolution Smart contracts inside your smartphone Phase 1 evolution, revolution Help me help these phone Whole body markerless motion capture The metaverse broken after the metatope golden era The whitelist still open, hurry up what you need, golden chariot Holy virgins that's holding cherubims, paving the road with fairy dust Create, create the avatar of your wildest dreams, yeah And use it inside your live stream and all yeah. your metaverses, favorite games and widescreen Metatope, visualize your digital ID yeah. I seen the metaverse through metatope, my eyes a megaphone Customize my empty skin to optimize my flesh and bone yeah. Metatope is your mirror to the metaverse yeah. I seen the metaverse through metatope, my eyes a megaphone Customize my empty skin to optimize my flesh and bone Metatope